Hey guys, this is Daniel with Pwn CNC and I'm here with in front of my Shapoko 5. Um, I'm working on setting up the ATC. We're gonna hook it all up with the wiring, um, hook into the uh, controller, um, run the wires, show you the connections, actually show connections on the motor, um, as well as um, other features of the uh, Shapoko 5. But I did want to switch gears. Um, a vital component of our um, ATCs is our pneumatics enclosure. And over here on the left, I have got that pneumatics enclosure right here. Um, we've got a couple regulators on either side. Um, the regulator spaces are right there in the front so you can see them easily and adjust. All the connections and controls are similar to our VFD. Um, which means these panels are also similar to our VFD except they have some additional holes. So we're going to switch over to uh, one of our teammates, Jeff. Um, we're building an entire team here at Pwn CNC to help you with all your problems um, and to come up with innovative solutions and products. Um, he works on one of these components, um, which is, well, actually he works on a couple components. He's the guy who's 3D printing all of our joints. Um, the joints we don't print here, he's printing there at his shop, um, as well as um, he just picked up a Onefinity, um, set it up with our spindle and got it all running. He's working on our HDPE panels. So let's, uh, let's take a deep dive into how we make these panels and share some more information with you. Um, so take it away, Jeff. All right, so today we're gonna be cutting some of our HDPE sides for the pneumatic enclosure for the ATC. And this is a two-sided cut where I'll be using dowel pins when I flip it over so that it lines up 100% perfect based upon those pins. So I'm marking the bottom edge and I'm just giving myself a reference here as far as what line I'm using this way just so it, I'm in the general area when I uh, set up a new sheet. So I'm just going to install some of my clamps and hold it down in place because this is running pretty fast. We're pushing pretty hard on this stuff so we want to make sure it's clamped down good and doesn't move anywhere on us. Now that I've got it all clamped down, I'm going to probe my XYZ with a block. You always want to make sure you hook up your clamp to the bit. Otherwise, when you try and probe, it's not going to work and it's going to break a bit. Especially these little eighth inch bits. They snap off pretty easy. And then we'll probe the Z. And we're all set. Double check our bit height. See how many spacers we need on our boot. Yeah, that looks good. The bit is right at the bottom of the brushes, so the brushes are going to make a great contact. I'll get you guys moved over in this position so you can see loading up the file. I'm sure everybody's done this before, but anyway. Load. I've got three different files on the here. Uh, one for one side, one for the other side. I labeled them first, outside, second, inside, so I know which ones to cut. And then this other one, the first index, uh, 12.5, that is to drill my index holes into the wasteboard to put my pins in. So I'm going to run the first outside first. That'll cut it. So we're going to load up. And the first one, and there we are, we're doing a bunch of clearing. These are all clearings and then some holes. 
and pockets. And they'll get flipped over and this is one of the index pins and this is the other index pin spot. So now we're going to go into the program and do a rewind. And the spindle's kicking up. I've got my dust collector hooked up on a remote switch. So now that's on. And now we just watch the car. Well, there we are, the first side is cut. And you can see there's the index holes for the guide pins. Nice and tight. All right, now we will loosen up the clamp, take the clamps off. So there's everything. There's counter sunk holes for the counter bores for the heads of the screws. Uh, these are for the gauges and the pressure setting knob up here for the enclosure. I'm gonna make sure so that everything sits flat so that you can get all the stuff that's it's dry now that it's winter, so it's pretty static here with this plastic. So I'm gonna take off the dust boot. Put on my brush and get it all cleaned up. And the four inch Maglock brush is available on our store. You can get the maker's files to do all your printing. Um, you can buy the magnets and the brush either in the store. You can source them other, other places, but some people that have been doing that complain that the magnets, that there's not enough magnets in this to hold it on. It's because the magnets they're getting on Amazon are not the same quality. And uh, they're not the same strength, I guess is the, the thing to say. Um, the magnets we use are I'd have to look it up and I'll put it down in the bottom of the screen as far as what uh, strength the magnets are, but I know they're one step down from basically the strongest. Um, even when you're mounting things up, if you get some skin in there, it's gonna pinch you pretty good. They're pretty strong magnets. So if anybody's having issues with their mag lock stuff, not holding together really well, try some new magnets. Okay, making sure everything's clean and so that everything sits nicely. And get my guide pins. All right, All right. so I know the guide pins are there because I got my line that gives me a reference point at least where they're at. That lines up. That's all lined up. Now I'll reset my clamps and I'll take out those guide pins. So I set this file up. I use 
Vectrix software, which actually has a two-sided option, which is really nice. It, uh, the two-sided option allows you to see through your design and see the other side. So I was able to take all the vectors from the first side, put them on the project, and then you click a button, you click the button on the top, it'll flip and show you the, the back side of your project, and you can still see your vectors from the front through, so that way you can line everything up. So all my vectors had all the different holes and everything in it, so I can make sure they're lined up perfectly. And the same thing, these guide pins, the guide pin holes um, were showing on both sides and they're dead center. These are perfectly centered with everything in here. So by using them, flipping it on there, it's almost impossible to do anything wrong as long as you have enough reference marks on both sides to uh, get everything lined up. And now I'll take these guys out. I might put a little bit of tolerance in that hole. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Having them tight is better than being loose. For now, just for the heck of it. It's gonna make somewhat of a mess, but I will, uh, I'll take the boot off and run this without the boot just so you can see it carve and make a mess. So we're gonna pop the boot off, the brush off, and I'll change the camera angle a little bit so that you can get a better view of the carving. And we'll load up another file just so you guys can see everything that I've been using here today. This is in testing right now. This is our pedestal mount for the Maso controller. Mounts off to the side. You can mount this, basically you can put it anywhere that's within your cable length where the reach is, but this way it gets it out of the way of all the dust collector hoses. You can, it has lots of mobility. You can push it all the way out of the way so that it doesn't get bumped into or hit. My garage has cars that park in it in the winter, so with people moving around this way, I can tuck it back and not have to worry about anybody bumping into it and hurting it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's in development. I'm just doing some testing with it, find out exactly what kind of materials, how well it holds up. Um, and there's this, we have one other option we're also working on to, and see how that works out. Um, changing the mounting up a little bit and having a more articulated arm and then milling certain pieces out of aluminum just for the strength because we don't want this crashing down to the floor. Okay, see now we're gonna load up the second file. This one is quite a bit more basic. It's gonna drill five holes in each panel and then it's gonna go back it's going to cut channels along the insides for the acrylic to fit in or actually now the, the new enclosures are using aluminum for the top, bottom, front and back. Um, so yeah, they'll cut those for it to slide into and then it's going to cut out all the individual, the eight panels using 3D tabs and then to take the 3D tabs off, I have a flush cut eighth inch rounding over bit and then I'll be using to take those off, which gives it, eases the edge just a touch and then gets rid of the, uh, the tabs and you can never tell they're there. It doesn't require any other kind of post-processing. Then it's going to get a little messy, but not as bad without doing all those big pockets. There's not going to be a ton of plastic, but this way you can at least see it do some carving. I think I'll lower you down a bit more to there. How's that? That looks better. All right, let us let her run.
All right, there it is. One uh, messy CNC table. Oh, so time to get it vacuumed off. And grab my brush. Well, there it is. Everything's all there. And uh, the 3D tabs are just deep enough to hold, it on, hold them on. And they easily snap out. So now, we might as well do a little video of the tabs coming off with using the roundover bit too. So that all makes it pretty easy. As you can see, the tabs there. Tabs are pretty small. They're thin. There's a little bit sticks out. And this is how the tabs come off. So there you go, tabs are off, nice and clean, can't even tell that they were there. And the outside edges are just nicely eased over just a touch to uh, just make it comfortable to handle. And that's it, that's, uh, that's the enclosures for our new Maddox enclosure for the upcoming ATC that be available for pre-order on Black Friday. So don't forget to like, give, give this video a thumbs up, click the notification bell so you can always get notified whenever we have some great videos coming up. And uh, don't forget to subscribe too. And remember, don't just own your CNC, dominate it. <laughs>